what I planned at very important. They give us the, the tools to be basically to create the basic knowledge to try to understand how plant works, how cell wall is deposited, and for example, we work on how certain cell wall are deposited in the plants, so we can later on translate it to 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 bungee crops much faster, cheaper, and and the way that understanding how cell wall is deposited, we can control biomass density. Uh, we try to understand how the polymers on the cell wall are built in a way that can manipulate the composition. So we want to get more C6 sugars than C5 sugars because C6 sugars are easier converted. We develop technology that we accumulate like mixed linkage glucans. It's a polymer from grass that now we can de deposit it in, in plants and on dike cuts. We try to also enhance the amount of galactans. It's also a C6 sugars. So we now understand we have all the enzymes who can produce these polymers. Enzyme we can transport the substrate of these enzymes and also enzyme that we can produce this, this substrate at the same time. So now we try to combine all these genes together so that we can get high amount of sugars. And those sugars are much better than I would say than cellulose because they are non recalcitrants, they are very easy to hydrolyze. This is one example of polymer we try to accumulate in the plants. And again for that we need to understand and identify all the enzymes involved in this metallic pathway. What is also nice to have these model plants, we can develop synthetic biology tools such a way we can be more precise, we can do fine tuning of gene expressions that we can turn on, turn them off at specific time points, specific tissues. So all these, these model plants basically allow us to go much faster in research. And then the next step, we, go, we translate them to energy crops. But again, if you think about energy crops, to get seeds to seeds, it takes several months and even a year to get seeds from energy crops. A model plants basically in two to three months we can get seeds to seeds so we can go much faster. So, Swiss rice is, uh, it has been selected as one of the energy crops. It's a perennial plant, a way that can grow, be grown on margin lands. It requires less nutrients for, for growing and producing a lot of biomass. What is the benefit of this perennial plant? They can remobilize all the nutrients in winters. They go back to the root systems in a way they can remobilize for the next spring. So it's one of the reasons you need less fertilizers and also is creating, creating less ash that they can carry to the, to, to the bio refinery. Um, one of the benefits of having these perennial crops is a way that we can also go to better lands than it's a way that we don't compete with food. Uh, so it has one of the major benefits. There are, it's quite challenging plants to, to engineer, but now we, we have all the genetic tools uh, that we understand the genome has been sequenced with the JGI. So we have now all the basic tools that we can ma start to manipulate this, this bioenergy crop. So if you think about the diversity, I mean, this, we need crops in different areas. They're not every crop can grow at the same place. And even think about something sustainable, then we can have a part. If you have monocultures, I would say, if you have a pathogens, then you lose everything at once. So it would be bad in that regard. If you think about having diversity based on, on lands, so if you think about desert area, it's maybe better to grow agave because we'll never got many Swiss rats capable of growing in very dry areas. If you think about practices from the farmers, maybe you could think about developing uh, sorghum. It's a lot of people already working on sorghum. In a way, it can be used as replacement of a current crops. Uh, it can be used as intercropping. Uh, and this way, it can be give a higher diversity and give flexibility to farmers. So farmers can decide from one year to the other one which crop they want to grow on.